The thing about the Olympics was it's like a kind of two year job. And yet you kind of picked up signals quite early on that you were likely to go insane if you only did this for two years, because it's not really a two year job. There's a lot of hanging around. There's a lot of what they call procurement, tender, all this kind of stuff. It's just like, um, so you've got to keep working really, you think, because uh, otherwise you sort of turn into uh, one of, you know, you turn into this machine, which is, and one of the things we wanted to do with the job was actually not reflect the way it's, it normally happens, you know, to do something a bit different with it. So um, we suggested, I'd already committed to Frankenstein actually at the National Theatre, and I said, I'm gonna to have to take that as a sabbatical. It'll be the same kind of team of people working on it and who were working on the Olympics, so we'll go off and do this. And I sort of, and I, I said to them also in the second year of preparation, we're taking another sabbatical and we're gonna make this film, Trance. And um, in a funny kind of way, they kind of, although it looks busy, you kind of, um, because of the profile of, certainly Frankenstein had a very big profile and, and the Olympics obviously has a huge profile. You're locked on as being very busy, but actually they're all, and they're not, they're very uh, complementary in a strange way. Because although the Olympics is obviously family friendly, it's for everyone and it's kind of celebratory, the dark side is just as important and that manifested itself in Frankenstein, which is obviously one of the great dark stories, and, um, and Trance, which is also a much darker tale, although it begins in a slightly more, in a deceptively convivial in, in a, a, a pleasurable way. It moves it's inexorably darker and darker as the story unfolds. I remember. I worked in the theatre a lot and then once I started working in uh, and I'd done a bit of television and theatre from going from one to the other. But once I started making films, I'd kind of forgotten the theatre really for... And in fact, I'd stopped going a lot as well. Um, so I'd lost the habit of it. And you have to kind of relearn it a bit. I was a bit rusty. And that was one of the... Um, that was one of the kind of worries about doing Frankenstein is, you know, what were you going to be like if once you shook the rust off? Was there been anything left, really? Um, but of course, because of the Olympics, it all became... Suddenly, Frankenstein became a kind of preparation for this bigger live spectacle, really. And it, that was quite helpful, actually, because the Olivier, where we did Frankenstein, is quite an intimidating space. It's a large space. And, uh, but of course, because you've got this even larger space, so it's in Stratford, you're gonna eventually be working on it, felt like preparation for that. So that helped, actually. Felt like we were kind of, it was all leading to other things as well. And we do, and actually we tried out in, in Frankenstein a couple of ideas that we eventually, that manifested themselves in the Olympic, uh, in the opening ceremony as well. It is different with actors and it's kind of something you have to, I got, it's, it's lovely to learn it really. They, um, obviously the difference I think is that in the theater, they're the storyteller. No matter what prep, you prep with them kind of like prepping a film, really, in a way. But when you make the film, you're the storyteller. And you guide the actors to help you tell the story. And then you take it away from them, and kind of like they go off and they make loads of other films or they, whatever they go and do. And you, you kind of make the film, really, in the editing. In theatre, it's different. All the prep, then you leave, and they get on with the storytelling, really. And you're exhausted by the end of the process of, you know, the six weeks rehearsal or whatever. But actually, they're not. They're the opposite because they have to be... That's just the beginning of the journey for them. Whereas for you, it's sort of the end of the journey. That's interesting. So you're pre prepping them for that. When you make a film, you can push an actor. Uh, I mean, the most obvious way is in stunts, but in many different ways, emotionally, you can drain an actor and they want to be drained because they've got recovery time immediately afterwards. In theatre, they're just fueling themselves. Basically, they're just loading themselves with fuel because the energy expendency is not in the rehearsal. It's actually in the run of the show. And that's both physically, you know, especially in a very, like with Frankenstein, which is a physically very demanding show for the creature. And, and emotionally, you know, they have to be able to, um, every night they have to do it like you're seeing it for the first time. Whereas, in fact, it's the 70th time they've done it, you know. So it's a strange... Um, and you have to learn that difference, really. And it's, um, it's, quite, it's quite refreshing, actually, doing theatre, because you, you... I mean, it's true. 
It's not true on film because, as I said, you're the storyteller on film. But the way people perceive both experiences is the same, is they see it through the actor. And it's good to be reminded of that as a director sometimes because you forget that 99% of the people are there. They're not really, they don't really care who directed it, really. They certainly don't care who wrote it, who produced it. They're not really very much interested in any of us. What they're really there for is to see, is this actor any good? Either because they like them anyway, or that they're a discovery for them, or a surprise that they were doing this kind of role. And that's the relationship, you know, that's the equation, really, of the, the audience and the storyteller. One of my beliefs really is that we try and limit our budgets because to have that kind of freedom, that kind of slight uncertainty, deliberate uncertainty in a way, is very um, dangerous with a lot of money. You can waste a lot of money very, very quickly. You can go down blind alleys and things like that. But if you have a circumspect budget, you're allowed a certain degree of it where you're actually trying to discover the style of the film or the, the essence of the story as you go along really. But I like that slight uncertainty, that feeling of not knowing what you're doing. And certainly I always say the, that, you, in a way, regardless of whether anybody agrees or not, that your first film is always your best film, because that's really when you don't know what you're doing. And you kind of just got to... So that's full of real innocence and naivety. And film is so technical, there's always a danger of it becomes a trick always, you know, that there's so many technical things you can do with music, with movement, with manipulation. Um, and that suits some stories, obviously, very well. Um, but you've got to try and keep a naivety in there somewhere, a, a kind of delicious naivety, if you can, which lets you discover things in the way you portray characters, situations, cities, landscapes, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to do. You know, you're always trying to find something that you're not, that surprises you in a way. And the hope, and then you hope it'll surprise an audience, I guess. I always describe my love of cinema is um, that you are mesmerised by these flicker. You know, you're trapped in a room by your choice, um, and you're mesmerised by these flickering images. They've, this pleasure dome that's created for you for ninety minutes, an hour, what you know, two hours, whatever it is, and you. And it's almost like when it, and it's most perfect as well. It's not just the visual uh, mesmerism. It's also the air is sucked out of the room. There's a perfect vacuum, nothing between you and this story, you know, for that amount of time, which you know we're getting any other experience, I don't think. Action! It's, you know, it's such a buzz crafting a film together, you know, with a bunch of people. And it's such a... Uh, <laughs> it's, it's such a... Well, it's what, what, what's his name? Oliver Stone says, you make a film inch by inch. And that's like, there's, that's one of the best expressions I've ever heard. It's absolutely true. You just inch forward. And there's something delicious about that. If that you can arrive at something that you're all happy with, or you feel that works at the end of a, such a, a detailed process, there's something wonderful about that. Theatre's much more, um, there's detailed work in it, obviously, but as I say, the actors are in charge of the storytelling, so it's more of a, a flourish, really, in a way, um, that you use on it. So, yeah, I mean, I'm not, no intention of doing any more stadium shows. That's a one-off, so I don't really know anything about stadium shows. I don't really want to know anything about stadium shows. We got away with it, and that was fine. Um, but no, the cinema is, uh, you, while you're lucky enough to work in uh, the use of large-scale imagery, uh, flickering in front of people, it's a wonderful job, yeah.